I mean, this is silly, but I had no idea that fart jokes would be so much fun <laughs> in our house, but they're just, they're the top notch. Does your daughter get it on it too? Oh my gosh. She's one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet, she is the loudest farter in the family. And then we have Jude. He's the smelliest farter in the family. Like, <laughs> And it's a big joke, and everybody loves it. So many people think it's just boys. My girls are all about the poo and it's the so farts it's and so all funny. of it. It cracks me up. I was like, oh. I never imagined that this is how it would be with girls. They're they're just as bad as boys. It's, it's hilarious, actually. It's so funny. Hey friends, my name is Kelly, mom of two, and the host of Oh Baby I Had No Idea, the number one new podcast for parents. Today we are joined by David, aka Not Perfect Dad. He and his wife have four kids, age eight, six, five, and four. He is from Wisconsin, and for work he is a freelance videographer. So everything from wedding videos to commercials, and you can tell his videos are so good. So due to the nature of his work, he gets to be at home a lot with the kids. So he's kind of like a part-time stay-at-home dad. And he started his page because he saw on social media a lot of videos about kids growing up quickly and how to be a better parent. So he decided Hey, I can do that too. So on today's episodes, we are going to talk about his I had no idea moments. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss them. On next week's episode, we're going to be discussing the silent struggles of a dad. So definitely stay tuned for that one as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, David, you are officially my first guest yes. on the show. Yes. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> That's great. How are you feeling? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Not nervous. Not nervous at all. No. We're good. No. Well, I found you actually because of one of your reels uh, that went viral. And it was kind of like the silent struggles of a dad. And we'll get more into that later. But how long have you been doing this? Uh, not very long, actually. Really? Um, no, it's actually kind of ridiculous. I think it's only been about two and a half months. Wow. I know. That's amazing. Know. We went from in two months, two and a half months I'm over 100,000 followers, and I still don't oh my really gosh. understand. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's pretty It's clearly cool. amazing content. That's well, thank you. gotta be why. Uh, and it seems like the topics are really resonating with people as well and yeah. opening up a lot of conversations. So yeah, I can't wait to learn more about you through this. Let's dive right in. All right, so first I wanna talk a little bit about your wife's pregnancies. So when you found out initially, were you excited, nervous? What were the feels? Oh, both of the everything, everything. everything. <laughs> yeah, I I think it was like excited and terrified. You know, like, are we ready for this? You know, and uh, but as the time uh, melts away, as time ticks down, it just becomes more and more like maybe this is right, maybe this is awesome. You know, like yeah. Was it, it was, planned? Unplanned? This was unplanned. The first one was unplanned. unplanned. Yeah. Us too. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I had no idea we were going to get pregnant. That's probably the terrifying part. <laughs> yes. I can definitely relate. When you found out that you guys were pregnant, what were your expectations of what that would look like? Sure. Um, I think me and my wife, we both had older siblings that had gone through pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of a little bit of a help and you know that someone else has gone through it, you know, like your older sibling who you think is a wuss or somebody like that, you know, <laughs> so you think you can, you, you, you're going to be okay. My initial or my expectations were, I guess from, from, from television, from movies, from friends mm -hmm. and things like that, you get the idea that it's, it's kind of cool, you know, and it's kind of hard, right? You know, you get, you get both of those things. And I think. I think it was like right on. I, I don't know. I I mean, maybe different from my wife. Uh, I think it was right on as far as everything we felt, all the highs and lows. It was really cool. So obviously for women, it's difficult in like the physical oh aspect, emotional, mental, all of that. So was there anything that changed on your end? I feel like without even knowing you become, you have to become more supportive and more nurturing 
um, because they're going through something that's so dramatic Mm -hmm. and so drastic on them that you just want to, I mean, you can't go through it. So you have to do everything you can to help them through it and whatever it is, you know. So what surprised you the most, whether good or bad throughout her pregnancy? There's so many. So the first time we were pregnant, um, I wasn't a huge Harry Potter fan and my wife was. And okay. um, so she's like, well, why don't we watch them? I'm like, I guess like we're not doing anything else. <laughs> so then we watched Harry Potter and you know, like when you're, when you're busy or you're pregnant, um, you fall asleep a lot during movies. So it probably yeah. took, it probably <laughs> took us like two months to watch the whole, <laughs> the whole series. And then I was hooked. I was like, oh, this was really cool. I'm glad I finished it. Like, I had never seen all the Harry Potter m- movies. And then we did it again, you know, like watched it again because, you know, we got nine more months to go. So every time we got ended up being pregnant, it was the nostalgia of going back Aww. to Harry Potter because it was such a good, like, you know, it just made us, it was enjoyable. We were just spending time with each other. Um, it was just movie night with uh, Harry Potter. So you're, what you're telling me is I need to watch Harry Potter because I've never oh my seen any of them. Probably a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna have to do that. We still talk about it today. Like, so like anytime um, she a- she she asks, "Do you want to watch Harry Potter?" I'm like, "Are you pregnant?" Are you pregnant? You know? <laughs> yeah, it comes up all the time. <laughs> oh, that's great. So pregnancy, you think Harry Potter? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Oh, I love that. That's so funny. The biggest surprise. I had no idea that when we got to delivery, we were having a baby in 15 minutes. That was just <laughs> ridiculous. And oh my gosh. I mean, everything leading up to that point, like, okay, we're doing all right. We're doing good. And then we're driving there. And <laughs> I mean, I, you know, she seems so uncomfortable. I'm like, we, you know, she's telling me we got to hurry. I'm like, is it okay if I run this red light? And she's like, yeah, there's nobody around. I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it got pretty intense. So that was that was our first, right? Mm-hmm. Um, from that point on, I was always on edge whenever we got close to that due date because I did not want to be, I did not want to be delivering the baby personally. Yeah. I, I think there's more qualified people to do that. Yeah, not delivering in your closet or something. <laughs> no, I did not want to do that. Oh my gosh. Oh, so it happened every time or? Uh, no um okay so that first one was 15 minutes and but like the sec second third i think the longest one was maybe four hours of just like at the hospital and then like you know like half hour of labor like she was always okay. fast you know wow. like but at least we were there you know so next let's go on to the births um so obviously you said that they were fast yeah. Jeez, and they were oh, all man. hospital births yes right yeah. So, did you take classes beforehand? Just that uh, one time, yeah. We did one. Yeah, just the first um, time. Yeah, yeah. The, You're the a pro time. after that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, did you find them to be helpful? Um, you know what I found to be helpful about the classes that we took through the hospital was not so much like the labor delivery part because mm-hmm. let's just like honestly. When you go into labor, like just the rule books just go out the window. Just forget about it. Like they told us, they told us, you know, go ahead, make your, make your CD or MP3, whatever. (laughs) Um, uh, Make your playlist of songs you want to listen to. You know, we had 15 minutes. What, what was that going to do for us? You know, like, (laughs) you know, bring, bring, you know, pack your bag, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess the pack the bags kind of good idea. Um, the thing that I found most helpful is they went into uh, after birth stuff. And oh, as far interesting. As like, yeah, like like literally like they, they did some, it sounds lame now because I'm, you know, a seasoned professional. Um, but like they did changing diapers and oh, um, okay. like holding ba- different ways to hold the baby, get them to burp and things like that. And I was like, and that's what I took away from it the most. Had you changed a diaper before that, or was that like your first? Um, no, I had. That would no. be my f- no. I yeah. was I was holding on to. I was saving it for my first. <laughs> yeah. 
Was there anything else that you wish you would have known beforehand, uh, before going into the birth? I mean, other than that, it was going to be extremely fast for her. Um, well, that would have been nice to know ahead of time for sure. Yeah. I think we did pretty good. Packing the bag was really nice. Like mm-hmm. bringing some things from home that you might want. Like for you. Yeah, and and guys, guys, I see this on I see this online. Don't bring like a video game to play or something like that. Like that's not going to help anybody in that situation. Honestly, I just right. I think that's a little bad. Um, but you know things that you guys can do together, like uh, like cribbage or cards or. Oh, I like um, that. Yeah, um, stuff like that. Like it, it's going to be a while. So, what was the experience like for you when she was having these fast deliveries? Like, what was going through your mind? Well, that first time was super emotional because you know you you see it on tv and you see it in the movies and you take a little class about it but no one and she doesn't she my wife doesn't do epidurals she's scared of okay them, and she mm-hmm. also feels like she can do it without them but i was not prepared i guess this goes back to the other question i was not pre- prepared for how much pain she was going to be in and that was super hard to watch. Like, you just want her to be okay. You want her to be okay. And then all of a sudden the baby's here and she's okay. And everything is just so remarkably better. You know, like that was just absolutely crazy to me. Yeah. So after your kids were born... So like the time in the hospital and right after for the first couple of months, what were the biggest surprises for you? It was a lot more work than I expected. Um, And it's not just because, you know, she has to do all the work, Mm -hmm. but I don't want her to do all the work. So I get up, I grab the baby, hand it to her, and (laughs) and then we're laying by each other and she's feeding the baby. I'm like, how you doing? You okay? (laughs) emotional Um, support (laughs) yeah that's all i can do i guess the biggest thing i had no idea that no one talks about this that babies have blowouts like no one mentions that no one mentions that anywhere like your parents never told you about it um i tell i tell my kids about it all the time because they think it's hilarious (laughs) But like my parents never told me about it. I was never prepared for the fact that kids could do that and comes out repeatedly. Every, yeah, all the t- like one right after the other. It gets all over their clothes. Just forget about it. Um, no just one prepares toss you for that. that away. Oh my gosh! I'm like, I, my wife is one to go like, let's just throw that away. I'm like, can't we wash? <laughs> <laughs> like and then I look at it, I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. No, nah, never mind. <laughs> no, that's not that's not worth the trauma. Do you remember how many diapers you went through in the first couple of months? Because oh, I'm that... trying to remember back no. and I feel like it was like between eight to twelve. I was shocked. It's like there's no way that we are going through eight to twelve diapers a day. Oh yeah, for like... sure. Because well, did you get the ones with the line? <gasps> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you so, see when it's blue. So whenever it's blue, you're just like, Oh, easy, change it. And yeah. And then as as they get older, you're like, well, it's just a little blue. <laughs> um, or on the second kid, you're like, you peek inside. It's just a little wet. There's no poop in there. You're fine. You know, yeah. like. That is true. That's such a good point. So what unexpected challenges did you face postpartum, if you faced any? Well, with our second child, his bilirubin count was high. Is that what oh, it's called? Okay. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we had to take him in like every two days to check his mm-hmm. to check those levels. And his skin was a little bit jaundice, so he's a little bit yellow. So we they told us to like leave him in the sun. So we put him in his little rocker and he would just sleep in the sun. And uh he was adorable. But like uh it lasted like two weeks and that like that was unexpected did you have but, to do the blue light treatment or yeah. just the sun no i was... I think because we did the sun okay and every time we went in he was just like so borderline that they're like we have to mm. keep doing this you know we have to keep checking it 
Uh, but it came it came down on his own. I I think we did a good job with the son. <laughs> yeah. Were you shocked by the sleep postpartum? Um, theirs or mine? Both. <laughs> uh, you know, each kid was a little bit different, but like I guess the early postpartum is very much just like routine. Like it I mean, it's not easy, not at all. We wanted to feed our kid like every two hours. Like I think we even set an alarm, you know. Um, to make sure that they were fed well. Have you heard this? Like, once you have kids, you'll never sleep the same again. Have you yeah. heard that? I have, I, yeah. I, I mean, because if you think about it, once you have the kids, you're up with them, and then the kids are older now, and our kids come sleep in our bed, and we don't kick them all out because <laughs> they're all different <laughs> ages. Um, yeah. And then, you know, like, you think about it. I don't want to think about it, but when they go to college – you're going to be worried about them. So like, you'll never, ever sleep the same again. And I totally, yeah. totally believe that, but it's okay because it's just your, it's just the way it is. And it's totally yeah, it fine. It comes with it. And yeah. yeah. What's the biggest piece of advice that you would give to a new dad, hmm. newly postpartum going through that first couple of months? There's, there's literally so many little pieces of advice I could give to a dad. Anything from keeping that diaper bag stocked. Mm -hmm. with everything you need um for those blowouts for the blowouts yes double up on the on the nook the pacifier whatever you want to call it yeah um smart. you get your kid a a blanket or a binky or whatever double up on it because they're gonna lose it you're gonna lose it it's gonna fall out of the car so there's one piece of advice double up on everything uh and the other thing is just make sure that you help your wife a lot as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So obviously you have four kids, a lot of experience there. What has been the most uh, rewarding part about your parenting journey so far? The most rewarding part. So you could be so annoyed or so angry about something that's going on with your children, like they're not listening or they're doing something that's just completely bad. And then five minutes later, they tell you that they love you. You can go from right here, like, like so like upset, so stressed out to just like right here, just so yeah. much in love with that kid again. And, the, and, the, it, and it can happen three times in 15 minutes. Like it's ridiculous. It's such a great experience to have. Mm -hmm. What is something that you have learned since becoming a dad? Ah. Uh, I like to think that my children have taught me patience, but I feel like I'm still learning that. Um, I feel like I'm not done learning that. They definitely have taught me how to love completely unconditionally. Never had that before. You know, like this baby just appears and it's just instant. Like you would do anything. You would give your own life for this mm -hmm. baby without a question. And then, I mean, this is silly, but I <laughs> never thought like fart jokes would be so much fun <laughs> in our house, but they're just, they're the top notch. They're just top notch. Does your daughter get it on it too? Oh my gosh. She's one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> Juliet, um, she is the loudest farter in the family. And then we have Jude. He's the smelliest farter in the family. Like, and it's a big joke, and everybody loves it. They love it, too. That's so funny. And it's countless conversations. Right. So many people think it's just boys. My girls are all about the poo and the It's so the great. It's so all funny. Of it. It's, it cracks me up. I was like, oh. I never imagined that this is how it would be with girls. They're they're just as bad as boys. It's, it's hilarious, actually. But... It's so funny. Okay, so what's a fun parenting hack or tip that you have? I guess this isn't very uncommon or much of a hack, but if you always have snacks on you, yeah, <laughs> you should always have snacks in the car. You should always have snacks at home. You should always have snacks in your coat. You should always have snacks... Somewhere, yeah, uh, because that could de, de escalate a situation at any moment. Definitely. What's your go to snack? I would have to say the fruit snack. Throwing the 
fruit snacks at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take this. Tame the get beasts, out of here. Right. You know, it's it's fun to switch it up because then they get like like, ooh, what's this? Like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what challenges are you facing in this current season of parenthood? Mm. Uh, we're facing a lot uh, because we have the four year old and we have the eight year old and the two in between. Mm -hmm. So the challenges are you can't treat every kid like they're the same age when they're so close together or, you know, like you can't have the same expectations for every kid. Even the oldest kid that is supposed to be, you know, the oldest and probably knows the most and most well behaved. He struggles with everything just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, and that that's our biggest issue in our household is each kid is so different in their age, but you look at them like our eight and our six year old, our six year old is big. He's muscular. He's, <laughs> and we're like, you, we don't think of him as a six year old mentally they're He's still little, not, the same yeah. as the older right? yeah um that's one of the toughest things and then mm -hmm. and then our littlest oh my gosh he's just there's just so much emotion inside of him and he loves you and then he hates you it's just ridiculous <laughs> what has been the most surprising part throughout parenthood so far for you oh gosh it's a loaded question right wow it's a big question. I mean, it's, I kind of feel like I'm touching on something we're going to talk about here, but like, I had no idea that their emotions would have such a big effect on me. Never would I have seen that coming. Once they have their emotions and their, it's, it's not just their tantrums. They just can't explain what they're feeling or how to deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. Dealing with that in the beginning is easy, but then the more it happens, you just, you want them to fix it and they're not ready to fix it. And um, that is one of the hardest things and the most, like the most surprising, hardest things you can deal with. Mm -hmm. Well, David, thank you for joining me today. Next week, we are going to continue a conversation about the silent struggles of a dad. But in the meantime, where can people find you? I'm everywhere right now. And it's just not perfect dad. Like, not like, perfect dad. Yeah. All right, friends, let me know what was your favorite part of the episode today. I'd love to hear about it. Leave us a comment below and let us know your thoughts. If you like this episode, I think you're really going to like this one too.